Shaw! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here for a brand new episode of In Joku's Pants Volume 2, Episode 2. This is the second In Joku's Pants, and I'm here with my very special friend, one of my first friends in the Dragon Ball Super Card Game community, the super player, Tony G. Hi, everybody. Thank you for allowing me to come into your pants. Oh. <laughs> I, am, I am pretty strict with who I let into my pants. So, uh... Nah, man, thank you for having me on your show, man. I fell in love with the video you did with Joey in Crossworlds. I think that looked amazing. And I was like, dude, how can I get on this? <laughs> I need to, I need to jump in those pants, man. So the first thing is you'll have, need a t-shirt from a number of years ago that was sent to you in the mail. That's right. That's how you, you messaged me. You were like, yo, Tony, or the super play is you messaged, you're like, oh, I, I want to make you guys a rad shirt. And I was just like, no way. I was like, no way, dude, that's so dope. And then you made me, uh, the Vic, not the victory strike, but you made me the height of mastery. No, it was the play mat. I gave you a height of mastery when I saw you in DC. Oh, that's right. The, the one that I made you was the playmat of the Nationals with the Goku like ink washed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's the art that's on the uh, Explore, Explosive Spirit Goku. Yeah. Which is the first leader that I used like competitively, actually. Oh, no way. I love that leader, dude. It was so fun. I played Victory Strike in that deck. That was actually like the first card I ever charged at a locals was victory strike because I had four in my deck I bought four of them they were 80 bucks and I was like charged and my opponent was like what are you doing and I was like oh I got more like I'll see it and he's like no you can't and he was like what are you talking about he's like that's a secret rare yeah, like you can just have one so I was like oh well I bought four of those kind of expensive cards but probably like the best investment I've ever made in my life dude you have like guys if you guys don't know Jonic or Joku has like a what is it? A suitcase like Seto Kaiba <laughs> filled with like 30 of them. And I'm like, dude, why do you have so many? He's like, I mean, I wanted them. And I'm like, dude, and they're all PSA graded 10s and 9s. I'm like, dude, what? This is a down payment to a house, man. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're <laughs> cheap out. I think, I think that card's going to sell for a million dollars. I think it's a, it's a tall statement and I know people don't buy it, but like, People don't buy things that they're in while they're happening. Like nobody that was like in Bitcoin was like, oh, this is gonna be worth like tens of thousands of dollars for yeah. one of these things. They're like, nah, these are like fractions of a cent right now, or mm -hmm. they're like fractions of a dollar. There's no way. But when you recognize how cool something is while you're in it, like why not invest in it if yep. you can within your means? And then like, if you're, if you can't, then don't. You know, but I believe it. Yeah, Victory Strike. I love that card. I think it's so cool. Shout out to Evan U7. I know you got there, Evan, listening to us. In the from group. the heavens? And from the heavens. Evan, <laughs> Evan in the heavens, listening to uh, our conversation. Um, all right, so mm -hmm. we're going to talk about a bunch of things. But the process of while we talk about these things is I got to get you into my pants. Lit. You got me in your bath. You got me in your bathrobe. So let's see. Let's, let's see what happens now. <laughs> right, so let's um let's check out some of these fabrics. Cool. Fabrics over here. These are all fabrics that I've designed and printed, starting mm -hmm. really like here, and like going to like here. So if you want to like cool. take a leaf through those fabrics, I'll put like the Joku toys of fabric down here as well. Awesome. Yeah. I really appreciate it. If everyone's wondering why am I wearing this awesome jacket here you'll never know the answer <laughs> watch it <laughs> watch part two after this. <laughs> definitely you'll find out how we got <laughs> part two of pants in joku's pants Ooh. is it episode or volume i would say episode episode yeah because you'll have other awesome guests right sure that's true yeah i mean nationals is coming up soon yeah, it's, yeah nationals is coming up so, so yeah, so Tony and I met in a, in a YouTube comment, actually, mm -hmm. I, I have this habit where when I see content that I like, I'll comment and be like, Hey, like, I'll make you a really cool Dragon Ball shirt. And they usually don't believe me, but Tony <laughs> hit me back and was like, dude, that sounds awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> and I made him this t-shirt and sent it out. And then like, we kind of stayed in touch. And then I guess I came out to LA a couple times and we yeah. hung out out there. And then, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, man, you were like one of my first friends in this community. And I, and I think, you know, a lot of people know Superplay's channel. Obviously they have definitely the most subscribers of any of the 
YouTube channels. And um, I think like one of the things that I've really come to yeah, this is cool. Fabric. Everything fabrics fire. Yeah. You want pants? You want shorts? You want capris? You want what's the vibe? What's the look? I don't know, man. I mean, I like these pants that I'm wearing. If, if they're jacket. like this, yeah, I guess yeah. that'd be rough. This, like, this is like my favorite fabric, man. I think awesome. Dude, Luffy is one of my. Oh, well, you know, you're the pirate king, right? I am, here. I am the shrimp of pirate. King. <laughs> He's the shrimp of pirate king. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is, that is the truth. Um, but yeah, no, we bonded over. Dragon Ball Super Card Game. You came to LA a few times, and every time we, you were in LA buying like fabric or because yep. if you guys don't know, Joku makes awesome clothing. So definitely <laughs> like like this awesome jacket here. But um, yeah, no, he always came down to LA, and we would hang out, and then we became really good friends. At, at the time, you were still a grad student. You were I was, still. I was still in my he was in, program. He wasn't Doctor MD yet. I wasn't. I wasn't a doctor of medicine and dentistry at the time. Um. Let me just take a, just a couple measurements. Out. Oh yeah, let me take this awesome jacket off just because. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll get in there. Okay. <laughs> You'll get in my pants. It's like a good card. <laughs> um, all right. So let me just get this real quick. Just give you a hug here. Nice. No, it's all good. Don't okay. don't tell okay. people my measurements. No, 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 I'm a little ashamed of my my weight here. <laughs> cool. Gotcha. All right. Um. So. Yeah, so like, uh, you know, I, I started doing YouTube stuff before the Dragon Ball card game, and then I got more into doing stuff in the Dragon Ball card game. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what I kind of wanted, like, I started doing content for my other game when like, I felt like I was like, all right, like, I'm pretty good at this, like, mm -hmm. I can do this. Dragon Ball, like, I never really felt like I was that good at it. And I think a lot of people struggle with that and like making content is like, maybe they want to make content, but they don't feel like they can make the content. But what's cool about what you guys did with your channel is like you and C-Rod are both teachers. Yeah. And you basically made like <laughs> a, a fun channel fact. that's like really oriented around like teaching, you know? And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that probably made your channel pop off in the way that it did was it was like, this is a place where people can come to learn how to play the game because that's what I did. I was like, I want to learn how to play the game. <laughs> and like, what I think a lot of people, what I think nice. goes on in this, in this community, you know, there's a number of different content creators now. Mm -hmm. that I think have, you know, decent stuff. Oh, it's beautiful, man. But the reality is like, nobody even has a fraction everybody that has a big following has a fraction of what you guys have. And I think there's this feeling of like, you know, you guys, you're not like full-time YouTubers. There's no. There's people like Ron, Rhyme Style or Nemo. Yeah, that, like, that do it. Guys, you know, it's a career for them and they do well with it. And like, yeah. you know, they, they're, it's very dialed in. They're doing these really detailed videos. Like you and C-Rod are teachers, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. You guys like, you guys like teach kids and you love the game and you love the community mm -hmm. and um you make these videos that that are really focused around teaching which is such an important part about the game because it's a really hard game to learn how to play and it's a really hard game to learn how to access to get into to play regularly but then once you do yeah it's like this amazingly cool community of like all these people that like play this game that are like super into it and it and it's so much fun you make a friend like dude dude you know, i would yeah friends. like you mentioned earlier we weren't yeah. ever gonna cross paths right, right. if like it wasn't how, for this game how in the world would we become homies if i if exactly start watching your youtube channel and then decide to hit you up and then yeah man, I'm getting you in my pants Ye um, years later <laughs> the story, literally the story of. um but on that note like you know, I think there's, people seem to have uh, strong opinions about the channels that are out there. And just to kind of like clear the air a little bit, like, first of all, you gotta give respect where respect is due. That's just the reality of the fact. And like, mm -hmm. you know, I think you and C-Rod are both good players. We just stayed up until 5 a.m. last night, play testing. <laughs> yeah, really it, was, it was really fun. I really enjoy it, but like, uh, 
playing a game, like sitting down and playing a game, and then like recording a match of a game while you're trying to like make a video of it, it's not an easy thing to do. Dude, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. And if it's not something you do like on a daily basis. Yeah. It makes it all that much harder, you know? So like <laughs> anybody out there that wants to like bash the super players for like missing a card interaction, like I, my recommendation to you would be like, you should try and make that video and then compare it to theirs. No, there's been times where like, I remember telling c -Rod, we were getting like, I would say like, it gets personal sometimes. There's sure. people that are like commenting in the comment section like, oh, go kill yourself. And I'm like, whoa, oh, what man. the heck? But then there's so many beautiful comments like, oh, yeah, like, sure. like parents saying like, this sparked their interest with their kids and they created, they found a yeah. hobby together. That's and so awesome, sometimes you, you like, let the negativity outweigh like the great so, comments like so that. So here's what I've realized with content. I don't know if you've seen any of like my Facebook interaction with haters, but like- Dude, they're so funny. <laughs> I love haters because <laughs> like people like me a lot and people are nice to me. Like pretty much everybody is like, oh, Joku, like I love your channel. Like you have such a positive energy. Yeah. Such a positive vibe. Like it's so fun tuning in and watching and like they like all this stuff, but like, and that's really nice. And that motivates me to keep doing it. It's cool. It yeah. I feel good. I'm like, heck yeah. Like I'm doing something fun and I want to keep doing it. But then there's these people that are like. Salty. You are disgusting. <laughs> yes. Die. Yeah, dude. It's so and weird. That, You're like, when what? When I hear that, I'm like. Why? I'm listening. <laughs> because I want to know, like whatever that judgment is mm -hmm. is masked by some sort of feeling and that feeling comes from a place of like they felt something when they watched enough to like take the time to say something <laughs> condescending to me and i love that like i want to know like we were just watching yeah that. i love that right like yeah you love that i want to know like what was it that upset you so much right and if there is something legitimate in some portion of whatever mm -hmm. your perspective was that's gonna make me better than me listening to my homies be like, dude, that was a sweet trip em. You know what shrip I mean? Trip them. Trip them, everyone. Trip em. All right, let me get this around your waist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Get them back in here. Hey. Whoa. Uh, hey there, ho there. <laughs> How's that tightness? You want to give it a little tug? Oh, that's perfect, it dude. Feels good. Yeah, it feels right. good. Um, yeah, but like, I think there's a, there's a lot about that. Just like the vibe out there. And like, the reality is a lot of these people that are making these negative comments, like they, they want to be on that screen. They want to be the one that's telling people what to do and they yeah. want to be the one that's setting the tone for what's cool. But like the reality of the fact is that doesn't really matter to me anymore mm -hmm. because I used to want to do that. I used to want to be ahead of the curve, but um, over time, once I just started making all my own stuff, I kind of just became the curve. See these curves? <laughs> Gorgeous. It's not, it's not easy being this kind of tooth doctor. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we got to get some, we got to get some pockets. Okay. Um, I got mm. these Broly pockets. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Broly. Green and red. Keep, keep Broly in your pocket. Yep. So, you know, I um, I didn't start with Dragon Ball Super content. I started with Marvel Contest of Champions. And I was the first one to get uh, Gwenpool to rank five. And my channel just kind of like popped off when I got that rank up because it was before anyone else. And everybody wanted to see what a rank five Gwenpool was like. And I think something similar happened with you guys you were talking about. Yeah. So we were talking about when we were going to get coffee. You were telling me like, what was the video that made it blow up like what made the channel blow up and you and i think i told you like first he asked like you were the first channel i'm like no we weren't actually the first channels i want to give a huge shout out to all these other content creators that kind of like aren't in the scene anymore but i mean give credit where it's due like you said yeah. like theo z um i think there was another channel anthony um hernandez. anthony hernandez um the hill twins i think there was some other content creators i don't know but they had like a thousand ppg they they had like they had like a thousand two thousand subscribers already right. 
And we were like, I sent my stuff to my friends and like, hey, subscribe to my channel. Like, you know, yeah. me and Sira were doing it. And we made a first battle and it was just like Goku versus Goku or it was something like a basic battle. Yeah. Didn't get that many views. It only got like 50 views. And that was from like our friends that we like shared yeah. it with. But then we did another iconic battle, which we were like, oh, let's do Goku versus Vegeta. Who doesn't want to see that? You know, like yeah, the yeah. anime, most iconic. That's why I brought up to Sira. I'm like, uh -huh. dude, iconic scene, them fighting, yeah, totally. iconic battle. Let's do that. And the moment we uploaded it, hit refresh, a thousand views. Hit wow. refresh, like it wasn't like immediately, but it was yeah, like yeah. within an hour, a thousand views. Hour two, 2000.5. And I was like, whoa, dude, this is it's going kind of viral. Yeah. And eventually by the end of the 24 hours, it was like at 30,000 views immediately. Wow. And that's when we went from like 50 subscribers to like 1,200 something overnight. And we were like, yo, C-Rod. Yeah, I think when I started watching your guys' channel, you had like 3.4 or something mm -hmm. like that around there. And like, what's interesting is it's, there's a lot that like, we don't know that we're doing that we do that makes our channel pick up in momentum in ways that we don't understand. And that's some of the stuff that, I'm really curious about, you know, like mm -hmm. I've watched your guys' channel. I've watched other channels. I, um, when I was thinking about, you know, I'm a dentist. I don't need to make Dragon Ball videos to like live my life and be comfortable. I do it because I love the game. Yeah. I'm passionate about the game. I think it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. I love shrimp and cardboard. And the fact that Bandai sends me stuff, I mean, like, that's amazing. How could I, you know, shrimp, you know, I get the Bandai shrimp on the box from Japan. <laughs> but uh, the thing that, like, you know, I was really looking at was I was looking at like, okay, like how much revenue do you make per thousand views? It's like four bucks per thousand views or something. Something like that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You don't like make money. Yeah. It's a myth. Everyone thinks that you're balling if you have like 50,000 views. I'm like, no. It doesn't line up like that. It doesn't go like that. <laughs> you know, like, in order to actually have like a real serious career out of a YouTube channel, you need to have at least a couple hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah. You gotta be up in the 700s and- Even a million. Breaking a million. Yeah. And like, you know, that's a pretty good job. That's yeah. It's a good job. Um, but you gotta be making content regularly and kind of has to keep getting views and all mm -hmm. this stuff. But like, what I was looking at, well, I was like, all right, like if Super Players have the biggest Dragon Ball Super card game yeah. following on YouTube, that means we're fishing from a pool of 34,000 people. Mm -hmm. which is nobody that's what i tell people. people but it's like that's not it's that's a, not like dragon ball fighters right you have like guys like globku that are like not huge streamers you know they, mm -hmm. they do it frequently and they make a lot of videos and like they're one of the maybe the lesser known mm -hmm. guys and they have like a couple hundred thousand like 80 mm -hmm. 90 thousand something like that you know like upper upwards of thousands and they're like the smaller content yeah. creators you know so what I was thinking was I was like, okay, like I could just go after as many people as, as I can in this community and try mm -hmm. and like make my brand and do all this stuff and get people into my channel. But like I'm fishing from a small pond. Like the key is like, yeah, we need to turn this pond into an ocean mm -hmm. and that's not going to be me by myself. Like, uh, yeah, of course it's my life journey to get every Dragon Ball fan in the world to know about the Dragon Ball Super Card game. You heard it here first. <laughs> Everybody that knows Dragon Ball knows about the Dragon Ball Super Card game. I can die in peace. The first thing it was getting in the Dragon Ball newspaper. That was a huge life goal accomplishment. Now, That's what's if up. I'm going to be the king of the Dragon Ball Super Card game, self-proclaimed shrimp and king until further combated, um, I've got to get everybody in the world to know about it. But the thing that I think is important is like content creators working together. And no, gets, I believe it. This comes back to the point that I was talking about with you earlier when we were saying like, you know, like people have their beefs. They're like, oh, like Superplay is like missing interaction on this video. And it's like that, like, okay, great. If you want to hit them up and be like, hey, dude, like, you know, there's this thing that goes, that, that sequence that happened this way and you guys missed mm -hmm. it, you know, you're like, oh, thanks. Like, didn't, you know, we didn't catch it. I think we'll look for it next time. Yeah. Maybe it'll improve what we do in the future. That's the best you can do, right? But like, <laughs> if we are, um, if we if we are able to figure out what our strengths are, right? Like your strengths, your guys' strengths is teaching. You're mm -hmm. good at teaching the game. A lot of people, probably a greater percentage of the community has learned how to play the game from watching your videos. 
Joey is great at analyzing meta stuff. He's a great player. He's really, really good at like talking about the game and how to get good at the game, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to break into that next tier, you got to be subscribed to his channel. You got to be watching the show. Check him out. I'm the best at shrimping me. There's nobody that competes with me. I shrimp him. I'm Kate like Shrippen. no other. I shrimp him like no other. I talk about the technique. <laughs> I give uh, oral advice uh, at the end of my video, dental tooth tips. And uh, I'm shrimping shiny cardboard, and it makes sense because I'm a pirate and I like shiny things, and you know it's shiny cardboard, and it all works <laughs> out. But but here are things that like okay, these are our strengths, right? Yeah. How can we bring our strengths together to not make the community isolated within these different niches, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can like Crossworlds more than you like any other channel. You can buy the Crossworld sleeves on your playmat, but you can you can support all the different channels in these different ways, mm -hmm. but we're all on the same team and like what we really need to be going after is making this game grow yeah and come to a place where it's accessible through all these different lines of access so um you know i i message i got you in this group chat but i messaged a number of content creators and at nats i want to meet up and basically make a plan of like yo what can we do together collaboratively where we can ride off of each other's strengths and mm -hmm. build each other's strengths up in these different areas where we can make it so that when somebody watches my video and they're like, okay, I don't want to keep watching this guy like cracking packs. I want to see something about the game and some mm -hmm. gameplay. Okay, then they go to your video. And I'm like, oh, cool. I see how this deck works. And now like, I want to really get into this deck and like break it and like break the meta with it. Mm -hmm. And they're over at Joey's channel, right? And like, it's, you know, we each may be the leaders in the area of where we're focused with what we do, but we can also expand into each other's areas, connect the other areas and mm -hmm. bridge these gaps so that the community starts to grow together and out, right? No, it's true. The universe is constantly expanding. <laughs> Dragon Ball Super Card Game Universe. Um, but yeah, I think it's an important thing that it's not like, Compet competition's healthy, don't get me wrong. It's good to look at things and be like, yeah, I wanna get there, I wanna be at this certain place. But at the same time, I think it's also really important to figure out ways to work together. Like the SCR Showdown, that's a great- thing. That was really cool that you guys did that. Yeah, and I think like doing, that was organized by Bandai, mm -hmm. but I think that there's things that like we can do together as content creators to kind of bridge some of those gaps and get people excited about being a part of all the different squads, you know, and not just being Joker or super players or you know whatever it is but um the other thing that i thought was really interesting if there are any other content creators listening to this video or watching this um i have a theory about why super players are the most popular youtube channel <laughs> I, I think about this a lot um i there is something about like YouTube videos, right? Like mm -hmm. when I open a card, I'll be like, oh my God, we pulled this SCR. Who, who is we, right? Yeah. Like me, myself, and I, <laughs> yes. But like, I'm not we, like I pulled this card. I have this card in my deck, but I'll say like we, because when I'm doing it, I don't feel like I'm just doing it totally for myself. It is a selfish act and I do enjoy it. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna do it regardless whether people watch it or not, but there's a sense of community with like my show is the Joku Shoku, right? And I'm Joku mm -hmm. and then there's the Joe crew and like we're in this together, like looking at this stuff, sharing this stuff, talking mm -hmm. about it in the comments later. And like what you guys did that I think every content creator can take a hint from is like the Super Players branding is so on point. It is like the most on point. I don't, I don't think <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> we didn't plan it. <laughs> it's called the Dragon Ball Super Card Game, right? Mm -hmm. So like you have the word super in it and mm -hmm. your players, your guys that are playing the game. And that's what you, the majority of your content is match battles and stuff like mm -hmm. that, right? So you're like the super players, it's a Dragon Ball super card game and you're the players that are playing it. And you also say to everybody when they, when your show starts like, what's up super players, stay super, right? Like yeah. your channel name, your community, your branding and the game that it goes around is one, all comes together on one, thing that is so hard to do and the ability to do that and not you know like if you guys wanted to jump into like digimon super players might not ah, it might work but with the shenron in the background right like some stuff yeah like, yeah you know. you know what i mean but the the fact that it's so branded around this one thing like it's 
intoxicating to watch your guys channel and not and and feel like you ha you eventually just totally feel like you're part of something mm -hmm. and feeling like you're part of something is the reason why you're on youtube you want to learn feel like you're part of something feel like you're part of a community feel like you want to get back to the community feel like you're part of a team right like yeah joe crew like i have my our team that's like the players that like play the game together but mm -hmm. like the joe crew really like i was like when i made the jerseys i was like yo anybody that wants to get one you can get one doesn't you don't have to be on the team that playing yeah. cards with the team to have the swag that we have like we're all part of this team together mm -hmm. so like yeah you know um abundance mentality i think it's called and i think it would really benefit things you know and, and it's yeah. tricky because we're in a game that's competitive right so we're inherently going to be competitive with each other yeah but um i think that's like a big part of just this, this show thing the joku shoku is like bridging those gaps and like bringing together things talking about things that can make the community more tight-knit and potentially even push it out farther but now that we've bridged all that and talked about all that stuff um there's going to be a part two of this in joku's pants and it's going to be appearing on the super players channel so uh we're gonna take a brief intermission here and i'm gonna get a little shinier <laughs> uh, is that the right thing to say That was perfect. Find out next time on Super Players B Dragon Ball Super Card Game. You stay super. Yeah, stay. Stay super, everybody. Stay tuned. <laughs>